Hello, thanks for joining me today. Today I'm going to be talking about shiny ingots and how to get them in the FTP Infinity Pack and probably most other mod packs. Um, shiny, shiny ores do not generally spawn in the world. They come from a uh, ferrous ore. When you put ferrous ore in a pulverizer, you have a small chance, I think it's a 10% chance of getting um, shiny ingots. But that's not a very good chance. So what, <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a couple different ways of getting a much higher yield of shiny ingots um, where for every single ferrous ore you can get one shiny ingot. Um, and really, to make a long story short, what you need, oh boy, got a bunch left over from last time. What you need is a ferrous ore and a cinnabar. So that's the <laughs> that's the short instructions. Um, that'll get you three ferrous and one shiny ingot for every ferrous ore and cinnabar. Now there's a couple different ways to get cinnabar. Um, one of the simplest ways, if you happen to have some redstone ore that was acquired using a silk touch um, pickaxe or a silk touch quarry, um, you can put that in the pulverizer and you will get a 25% chance of getting a cinnabar. So if I put four of them in here, for instance, we'll probably get one. Actually, let's just increase the chances and put eight in there. And we should end up getting about two um, cinnabar. So there we've got one. And then we'll need one cinnabar and one ferrous for every shiny ingot that we want to um, produce. So we got two. And it's just a chance, so it's a 25% chance that each one of us will get us. And here we got a little lucky, we ended up getting three. <laughs> So that's one way to do it. Um, if you don't want to deal with collecting redstone um, or using silk touch, there is another way. Um, and that is to make yourself some cryothium, uh, gelid cryothium in our magma crucible. So the first thing we need to do to make cryothium, um, we're going to need four ingredients. We're gonna need a snowball, um, some nitre, which is the same as saltpeter. Um, it's ore dictionary with saltpeter. A piece of redstone and some blizz powder. And in order to get the blizz powder, we're going to, I mean, you can either get blizz powder from blizz rods, from a blizz, which is an extremely rare mod um, that's found in, I can't remember the exact biomes, but it's some of the cold biomes. Um, the other way is to take a snowball and some destabilized redstone and um, in the fluid transposer and that will get you some blues powder. So what I've got, I mean, of course you can get snowballs out in the world. I've got a glacial precipitator, which basically you just dump some water in it and it'll make, uh, I believe it gives you eight snowballs for every bucket of water. Um, you can also use this thing to make snow blocks and ice blocks, but we're just using it to make. Yeah, so it used um, it's making eight snowballs for each bucket of water. So it's basically free. So so then we take our snowball and we put it in our fluid transposer with some destabilized redstone. Um, and for each for each blizz powder, we're gonna need one snowball and 200 millibuckets of destabilized redstone, which really translates to two pieces of redstone. So if you stick two pieces of redstone in your magma crucible, you're gonna end up with 200 millibuckets of destabilized redstone, which will give you one blizz powder. Um, I'm gonna tally up all the costs <laughs> afterwards. Let's see, I've got a crafting table here. So then we take our blizz powder, a snowball, a piece of redstone, and what was the other thing? Oh yeah, nitre. Okay, so to get our nit nitre, we go into our pulverizer and we stick um, our saltpeter ore, and that'll give us um, four 
nitro. You can also get nitro as a byproduct um, of a few other items. Um, okay, that's another saltpeter. Like sand, you have a 50% chance of getting nitro. So that's actually pretty cheap if you have a lot of sand or sandstone. I'm sorry, if you have a lot of sandstone and you don't have any saltpeter. Um, and then actually, you can also do that in the sag mill. You only have a 50% chance. I mean, a 15% chance with a sag mill where the pulverizer gives you a 50% chance. Okay, so anyway, we stick our, our niter in here, and that'll give us two cryothium dusts. So then we take our cryothium dust and we stick it in our magma crucible um, after we drain this red stone, which I will do off camera. Oh. Each cryothium dust is going to give us 250 millibuckets. I may as well just dump both of these in there. That'll give us 500 millibuckets um, of gelid cryothium. So now we take our cinnabar ore, and for each cinnabar ore, we're going to take 200 millibuckets of cryothium to produce one cinnabar. So we can actually produce two of them. Well, two and a half <laughs> with what we had. So, and then again, we take our cinnabar, we stick it in the induction smelter with our ferrous, and we get our shiny ingots plus three ferrous. So we actually increase the yield of ferrous as well because if we put ferrous in the pulverizer, we only end up getting two um, ferrous dusts. So that's a quick review and a breakdown of the numbers. Um, if we use the first method using the redstone ore, we're going to need about eight redstone, or about four redstone and one shiny ingot. I'm sorry, four redstone and one ferrous ore per shiny ingot. And we'll still get to keep our red, redstone, um, but we're going to be getting cinnabar out of the deal. So it's kind of free. <laughs> it's kind of not costing you anything. Whereas the second method actually does consume the redstone total cost, and I can't really, I can't really give you a cost <laughs> per shiny ingot because we end up with some extra materials. Um, but for instance, if we want to make five shiny ingots, we're going to need a total of ten redstone, four snowballs, two niters, which could be created from one saltpeter, and two cinnabar ore and then two ferrous ore. And then what we'll end up with in the end, five shiny ingots <laughs> and 15 ferrous ore um, is what the final yield would be for that. So, so I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe for future, for future videos. And if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them in the, in the uh, comments below. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.